Joined now by Congressman Emanuel Cleaver, Democrat from Missouri. Let's let's start there. Let's start with infrastructure because that does seem to be perhaps the only area right now uh, where there, there does seem to be some bipartisan agreement. Last night when the president mentioned it, I saw Democrats and Republicans uh, leap to their feet. Um, what do you think of this, this $1 trillion proposal and how we would pay for it, Congressman? Well, uh, obviously, uh, Democrats are interested in a, a trillion dollar infrastructure uh, bill. Uh, how do I know that? Because uh, we've tried it uh, many times for, over the last eight years uh, under the uh, leadership of uh, Barack Obama. It was just interesting last night to see that the Republicans jumped up to cheer for something that they've been against for the last uh, eight years. Uh, I will support an, uh, an infrastructure bill uh, if it does not uh, uh, be, if it's not based on cuts made to programs that I think are essential to the well-being of, of, of the country. Uh, if we start cutting uh, programs, uh, you know, to the National Health Institute and so forth, then I'm going to be uh, uh, against it. But I, I, uh, what some of the Republicans are talking about. Uh, is the repatriation of offshore dollars, and that it would be a one-time deal. We bring the money back and uh, charge a 10 percent tax on those dollars coming back into the country, and we do a, a program like that. That's not the way to deal with the problems that you've been discussing already with bridges, and I have them in my district that are in, in uh, uh, D-minus condition. Uh, we've got to have a real uh, uh, infrastructure or transportation program that should be funded over a six-year period. And if we're, uh, if we're going to do something significant like that, I I'm all for it. But look, the, the, um, nobody uh, will buy a car based on the horn. You can't judge a car by the sound of the horn. Uh, you got to get in and get the details. So right now, <laughs> we've got to have some details. I'm not going to blow the horn. Uh, one of one of the, the most moving moments last night for me was, was when President Trump addressed the the widow of Navy SEAL Ryan Owens killed in that, that raid in Yemen. She received uh, roughly a two-minute standing ovation. Uh, the president also once again noted the success of that raid. This is what Senator Marco Rubio said this morning about Democrats' reaction to the ovation for, for his widow. I don't mean this about everybody. I'm sure there were a few standing and clapping, and they clapped earlier, but it was a stunning moment. Uh, we were standing up in that minute and a half ovation uh, for the widow of that Navy SEAL. I turned back around my shoulder, and I see half the room, most of them sitting down. I, I was just shocked by that. You, you were in the chamber, Congressman. What, what did you see? What's your response to Senator Rubio there? Senator Rubio uh, probably has a bad memory, and so he needs to look at the video, uh, and he needs to also understand uh, that everybody uh, sitting was not protesting. Uh, I mean, there were there are people who, uh, who who stayed in their seats most of the evening. I, I have a good friend with two knee replacements who rarely stood and would not have been standing even if President Barack Obama was there. I think the Democrat the Democrats uh, comported themselves quite well last evening. Nobody shouted out, "You lie." Uh, well, I, think, I don't know if that uh, should be the bar, Congressman. Well, but, but absolutely, I get, you're right. But I get what you're saying. You're um, right. it, it's something else that was striking came after the speech. The Democratic response delivered by former Kentucky Governor Steve Bashir. Uh, he's in this diner. The customers, they look like some of the customers look like they were in a hostage video. Uh, Donald Trump, he wins Kentucky by 30 points. I, I don't think that Governor Bashir is, is the future of the Democratic Party. He's a retired governor. He's not, hey, what, what was the thinking there? Why have a guy like Steve Bashir give the, the response versus an up-and-comer in the party? Well, your problem is you asking about thinking, and that <laughs> didn't happen. Uh, look, uh, the governor did a fabulous job uh, in, in, in terms of health care when he was in Kentucky, did everything well. He, he left uh, uh, with a positive uh, uh, opinion uh, by the people of his state. Uh, but I, I would love to have had uh, Secretary Castro uh, as, as uh, giving the response, or uh, somebody like uh, uh, Cedric Richmond of, of, of New Orleans. Who made the call? Like, who, who makes the, who made that decision? I, I don't know. I would imagine that the leadership of the House and okay. the Senate 
uh, we, we obviously, we, we didn't have anything to do with it. Uh, I just left a meeting where we were discussing uh, the fact that we think we're going to uh, have a problem if we don't start presenting an image of the millennials and that, uh, uh, that there's a youth movement in the Democratic Party. Uh, it was not, you know, I'm one of the guys, I don't, I don't mind saying when we make mistakes, and that was a mistake. Congressman Emanuel Cleaver from Missouri. Congressman, always enjoy you. Thank you, sir. Good to be with you. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.